Niger River is an international river in West Africa. It flows through five different countries from upstream Guinea to downstream Nigeria. It is more than 4,000 kilometers long. Its drainage area is larger than 2 million squared kilometers and is made up of 11 countries. Flooding is quite common in the Niger River. So the question is, how does a country in the downstream end of the Niger find out the flow that will be arriving through five upstream countries? Normally, the answer would be to get two types of data to set up a hydrologic model. A hydrologic model is a computer system that can forecast flow. These two types of data are relatively unchanging data on land, soils, and rivers, and variable data on rainfall, stream flow, and soil moisture. The unchanging data is easy to obtain. For example, one can get terrain data from the Shuttle Radar Topography Mission, or SRTM, for anywhere on the planet. It is the variable data that poses the real problem for any hydrologic model. Especially rainfall, which is the main input, and stream flow, which is needed for tune-up of hydrologic models. There are two problems that make acquiring variable data for hydrologic models very difficult. Problem 1. The 11 national weather agencies of the Niger Basin have no agreement for sharing information on rainfall and stream flow. Problem 2. The ground network for gathering variable data on rainfall and stream flow is very sparse in the Niger Basin. This is a classic transboundary water monitoring problem that is not unique to the Niger River alone. We live in a world where water does not follow the boundaries of nations. Borders of nations don't match the boundaries of river basins. Today, there are many countries that are either located midstream or downstream of an international river like the Niger. These nations are completely dependent on everyday rainfall and stream flow information from upstream nations for figuring out transboundary flow. There are only a handful of treaties that address data sharing. Almost all of these treaties are for Europe or North America. None exist for Africa, South America, and Asia, where they are needed most. Even if there existed a rosy scenario of all nations sharing information, figuring out transboundary flow will still remain a very hard problem to solve. The total area of all the world's ground-based gauges for rainfall is said to be the size of a few football fields. This is grossly inadequate given how vastly large the world is. Nations are also losing their ground-based networks at an alarming rate. This is where space, the final frontier, can solve the problem of monitoring day-to-day -day transboundary water. Over the last few decades, Satellite technology for measuring rainfall, discharge, and soil moisture has made significant strides. That's why the world's leading space agencies such as NASA, the European Space Agency, and the Japanese Space Agency are all working together to launch phenomenal satellite missions. These satellite missions have exciting prospects for solving the transboundary water problem around the world. The Global Precipitation Measurement Mission, or GPM, will measure rainfall information every three hours anywhere on the planet. The Surface Water and Ocean Topography Mission, or SWAT, will measure discharge estimates for major rivers at least once a week.
the Soil Moisture and Mapping Mission, or SMAP, will measure soil moisture around the globe. Satellites are the only way to override nations' political and infrastructural limitations on the ground. Satellites in space are the only dependable source of information for day-to-day -day watch on flow 24-7. These new space missions, many of them led by NASA, will usher in the most exciting period for solving the world's problem of transboundary water flow. These satellite missions may one day help countries become completely independent in managing their water resources, come hell or high water. The Surface Water and Ocean Topography Mission, or the SWAT mission, is going to do two wonderful things for society, amongst many. One, it's going to measure the reservoirs all around the world. So you can go out and you can see a dam, and it's a beautiful thing. It's holding back all this water. Well, there's literally millions of these dams around the world. And we're going to measure, with SWAT, the water levels going up and down in that dam everywhere all the time. So that's going to be a fantastic new addition to what we understand from society is all these reservoirs, literally a million of them, being measured from space in a comprehensive way and that data being freely available on the internet, much in the same way that Google Earth gives us free data. Because for the first time, you'll be able to see the surface of the Earth's water as a global entity rather than one lake at a time.